Hey guys, VBAD here with another VPlace taking a look at the FJ-1, the Tier 9 American Light Fighter that comes immediately after the P-51H Mustang at Tier 8. Now this is my first battle in this aircraft and it is completely stock, sporting the same guns that the fully upgraded P-51H had, and while it is now a jet, it does have very similar characteristics, and as you can see here, I'm going to be doing the exact same type of tactics that we would do in the P-51H. We're angling the nose up very steeply, using what boost we have available in order to get up to 8,000 feet, and as you can see, it was very easy to do, and we're able to maintain well over 300 miles an hour with the stock engine. Now, granted, the more we upgrade this engine, the better it's going to be, but for the time being, I'm quite happy with it, and I'm going to play this with the exact same tactics as the P-51H. And what we're going to be looking for is aircraft that are playing outside their envelope. For example, this F-94D, controlled by a player, is meant to be somewhere around 5,000, 5,500 feet, and he lost all of his altitude performance, and we're going to sit up here and wait for unwary opponents to climb up, start to lose their airspeed while we are sitting comfortably at this altitude with a lot of our boost on hand. So right now we are starting to dive down on one of these targets and we're trying to make a selection between this BVP and this other fighter off to my right and we see that he's going into a straight vertical climb which caused him to lose some of his airspeed. Now this is a Japanese Ki-162 which is the jet tier 9 I believe and we were able to outmaneuver him quite handily. Now we have this BVP that we were looking at before and oh you've used all of your energy and you have essentially stalled. Now the nice thing I found about this airframe is I didn't realize how significant it is to have your guns mounted in the nose of the airframe. So without having the guns on the wings it appears that it's much more accurate and is has a lot more of a capability of getting a lot of those machine guns on target much quicker. And as we can see, this F-94D has not learned his lesson and was coming back to try and pay me back for killing him earlier, and he lost that engagement completely. So be aware of this when you're flying in your aircraft as well. What's the optimum altitude? Where are you supposed to be? And how is that aircraft supposed to operate? If you start to see high altitude fighters at low altitude, you'll know that their maneuverability is going to be relatively lacking since they're trading a lot of their maneuverability in order to get altitude performance, which is why you see consistently around a 10 second turn time for high altitude fighters while those Japanese fighters sport a much higher capability of maneuvering but only at low altitudes. Now here we are coming in against a whole bunch of ground attackers. Now you got to be very wary of ground attackers especially since a few of these are controlled by players because they can get their guns on you and these tier 9 and 10 ground attackers have pretty nasty tail gunners but we're able to put out a significant amount of damage on these aircraft very quickly. We are not going to sit behind their tail guns if we can avoid it and even that brushing pass I made on that aircraft was enough to be able to take out one of his control surfaces using that universal ammo loadout I like to use on my 50 cal fighters and caused him to crash into the ground since he's flying at low altitude and it's hard to make corrections when you lose a control surface. Now we're coming in on this IL-40P and I made a single pass and now I'm going to take my time and come back on him but oh looks like my team took care of it for me. Now this area seems like it's in hand for the time being so I was going to go back to the middle use my boost in order to get my altitude back and go back and rinse and repeat of what we did when we first started the match. But lo and behold those bot ground attackers are going to be doing the exact same thing they were doing before. Coming back to the exact same zone and doing the exact same thing. Now I start to get a little bit cocky here and I realize I got a lot of friends with me so I'm willing to sit inside the tail gun a little bit more than I would normally because I know I won't have to do it long since they are taking a significant amount of damage from all of my allies. And I didn't even have a chance to get my guns back on that target. This is what happens when you have a lot of teammates working together to take away enemy aircraft. 
We used our boost in the straight vertical, which is the way I like to use it when it comes to these light fighters. We're able to get some significant altitude and maintain control of this battle space. We're going to go back to the middle and see what aircraft we can dive on. I see that there's a ground attacker down there, so I would like to go after him, but before I do that, I need to take care of the most dangerous threat, which is going to be this light fighter at that same key 162. Now, he is maneuvering, but since I'm using universal ammo, I've taken out one of his control surfaces, and with that nose-mounted gun system, I'm able to take care of him pretty easily. Now, this F-94D still wants to come after me, and he knocked out my pilot. I don't have a med kit, but I'm okay with that. I think I can get the advantage on him, and because those guns are mounted in the nose, even though they're not going to be 100% accurate, it's enough for me to be able to put a little bit of damage into him and cause him some pain. Going into a straight vertical climb yet again in order to get the best bang for our buck when it comes to climbing with that boost, and we're going to go after this javelin. Now. This is where I start to make a mistake, but luckily it doesn't hurt me too bad. The Javelin has the advantage at this type of altitude. He has the power available on his boost, and he can cause me the most pain. But my own Javelin was already on him, so I didn't need to worry about it. As for our first battle, I think that that was a pretty decent performance considering that this was an invasion mode. Now let's go to the hangar and see what these battle results yielded us. Now this is a times three weekend still, and this was my first time flying the aircraft, so we get a little bit of a bump, and we were able to get enough experience in order for us to unlock the next machine guns. The nice thing about this next set of machine guns is that they fire at a substantially higher rate, and you're also going to find that these are the tier 10 machine guns, the same machine guns that are used by the F-86 Sabre, and both F-84 Thunderstreaks. That's right, this means that as we continue down our American multi-roll line, we will have available to us the top machine guns for those two aircraft, the Tier 9 and Tier 10 American pseudo ground attacker, as I like to say when we were looking at the P-47N, and I am definitely looking forward to it. Now be aware when you upgrade those guns, you're also going to need to upgrade or excuse me, resurface the aircraft for universal ammunition. When it comes to the equipment loadout, I am sporting engine tuning, the gun sights, as well as the radiator, because I want to get that boost back as soon as possible. Guys, I hope you enjoy the video. Again, like, favorite, comment, subscribe, and I'll keep churning out these videos for you. And when I get this thing fully upgraded, I'll show you this aircraft yet again. See you on the next one.